Hello everyone, welcome back. We're gonna be shooting the Palmetto AR-10 today. Yeah, I haven't shot this uh, in a couple of months. Um, I did a lot of videos on this earlier in the year. So this is a, uh, a the Palmetto PA-10 Gen 3. I'm gonna include a playlist below in the comments and description so you guys can check it out. I've done a lot of videos on this. So this is a, um, it's the uh, a 20 inch barrel and uh, I have on it the uh, primary arms 525 SLX and I've got a, uh, a hollow sun pistol optic on, on the offset over here. The primary purpose of this optic of, of the pistol one here is what I do is I use my left eye to, to get the dot on target and then when I transition to my right eye I'm on it you know so it's just a quick easy way for me to get on target so the pistol optics set up to my left eye and then the scope set up to my right eye and when I have both eyes open I pretty much the uh, the uh, the circle of this um, so this is a, a house on 507 C the, the, um, the, the circle disappears from the pistol optic um, so I'm in the next month or so I'm gonna probably be getting a 16 inch upper uh, because this 20 inch is nice. I've had this out to a thousand yards a few times. I've done a few videos on it uh, But it is freaking heavy all right, and then the scope on top of it the 525 is also heavy So what I want to do is I want to get a lighter version of this. So I'm going to get a 16 inch uh, You know that 16 inch barrel and I'm going to put like one of even my, uh, my One of my LPVOs on it right even my one probably my one to ten on this um, so I'll have like a you know, like like a true barrel rifle. Because right now this is more of a garrison gun. I mean, it's too heavy, I think, for it to be a battle rifle in the sense that you're going to be moving forward, right? So this is more of a garrison gun or a sniper gun, right? In the sense that, you know, um, you know, like if you're going to work something like this, you'll be part of a two-person team, you know. Uh, but it's definitely not easy to move around with just because it's it's heavy. I understand that. You know, there's lots of guns out there that are a lot heavier, right, that they use in the sniper role. Uh, but as far as the way I would be envisioning this, using this type of a gun with this weight, it weighs something like 12 and a half pounds uh, with the scope and mount and all the, all the stuff on it. Uh, this is like a garrison gun where I would just want to have this like in a fixed position covering a certain area and that's it, not moving around. So I want to get a 16 version of this that I could move around and the my, the main purpose of that will be primarily and and this as well is anti-material okay um, like if you need to stop a vehicle that's charging at you right uh, where you can start you know because the 308 is able to defeat barriers so that's the role I see for 308 uh, you're trying to go through barriers because with the you know I, I've done plenty of videos where I'm shooting a, a 5.56 with a 77 grain easily even with a 55 grain i'm shooting out to 500 yards so on soft fleshy things uh i think that 556 five, looks great if i'm going to go to something heavier like a 308 like an ar-10 i'm going more than just i'm going after more than just soft fleshy things or i'm going after like let's say what they would call a high value target uh where wounding is not enough you know basically it has to be a kill okay so that's the other option the other role i see for a 308 so anyway uh we're gonna put five shots at 200 yards it's winded today so uh i don't expect a super tight group the best i've done with this uh with this setup here is an inch and a quarter at 100 yards okay so that's usually on a day that has less to win so i'm shooting the freedom munitions 147 green uh let's see how we do uh, by the way, I'm shooting benched here because um, in this area here, it's very wooded. I have a very narrow path that I'm shooting at. Uh, and there's also a, a ground clearance type of situation. So if I were to get down prone, I, I wouldn't be able to see the target that's that's basically pretty close to the ground. Okay, uh, So that's part of the reason why I'm, I need to shoot from an elevated position uh, on, this, on this table. So that's the reason why you also got to practice shooting kneeling and standing because sometimes getting prone is just too low. Yep. All right, let's take five shots. Let's 
So basically this is just practice. I haven't shot this in a couple of months. I just wanted to get a, a feel for this gun. Parallax. Okay, so you see me adjust the parallax here. With, with this type of a scope that has a parallax adjustment, anytime you change the magnification, you gotta change the parallax. So even like, let's say right now I'm at 200 yards, if I were to go down to like 12 magnification, well, you know, now at that distance, it's a little bit blurry. So, so that's the thing with a parallax, uh, with a scope with a parallax adjustment. It, you're almost forced to use it. You know, it's not like an LPVO where they're, they're, they're fixed at 100 yards and everything else is kind of okay. With this, like every time you change distance or you, or you change your, your magnification, you, you got to adjust the parallax. So you always make it two adjustments. Threw that last one off a little bit. I saw it move. Uh, however, you know, you know the cool thing is with the five to twenty-five in twenty-five magnification at two hundred yards, I can act. I can see the bullet holes. I can see the bullet holes, and I can actually take a measure. Hold on. So a, a rough measure would be that my group at 200 yards is about two mils apart, okay? Because I can actually see the bullet holes. Uh, so that's that's one of the cool things about having a scope like this, a five to 25, that you can see that kind of a detail. I can see bullet holes at 200 yards. Uh, so that's really cool. However, it's heavy. This is a lot of weight. And, um, you know, one of the, the things I tell people is like, you know, like, like, like actually practice moving around with the gun. Because like right now, I'm going to go down at 200 yards with you guys. Uh, and I'm going to look at the target, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sling this gun. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to throw this over my back. And I'm going to carry it 200, 200 yards down and 200 yards back. So, and, and here's the thing, the, the, the sling is absolutely essential because uh, I'm not taking the chair and I'm not taking the table, but I am taking my bag and I'm taking the tripod. As you can see, I, I got this stuff over here and I'm gonna have the camera on the tripod in this hand. So, you know, this is what I mean. is like, you gotta get used to actually moving around with the gun, you know? And, you know, then you can see what the real difference is, let's say between a 16 inch and a 20 inch. All right, guys, so let's take a look at this. So this is 200 yards, and that is a nice tight group. I think I might have actually outdone myself. Uh, that might, let's see, this might be the best group I've ever hit um, on this rifle. So we got five shots at two inches. So that's one MOA. Now I have hit a half MOA with three shots. Um, and a lot of times with this type of ammunition, what I'll do is I'll discount, like I'll take four out of five. Because if you look at the four out of five, that's a that's a one inch group at 200 yards. So that's a half MOA. Because because this is Freedom Munitions, this, this is not match, match grade ammunition. Um, so you, so you, there is going to be, I mean, the, cons the consistency from round to round is not going to be excellent. There's usually going to be one flyer, um, 
Although I, I do think I pulled one shot, but I think the shot the shot that I pulled was that one, and it, it still landed. It ended up going a little bit a little bit higher. Um, so you know, and it, it's really cool that I can actually see the impacts as they were happening because of that 25 magnification at 200 yards. But yeah, if we look at the best four out of five, that is one inch, man. That is that is good. That is really really good. Hold on, let me show you guys the the rifle. Hold on, let me pause this for a second. All right, so yeah, that's the Palmetto. Um, Palmetto uh, PA-10 Gen 3. I mean, I've I've shot a bunch of AR-10s. I've looked at tons of, like, different AR-10 videos. I've shot a SCAR-17. Um, in my opinion, the Palmetto uh, PA-10 Gen 3 is the best um, AR-10 out there, okay? Okay. Uh, I mean, at any price range. Like I said, I've shot... I, I, I actually had uh, somebody lent me a SCAR 17 for about a week. I was shooting it. I, I didn't love it. Um, I like this a lot better. One, and here's the thing. like I think it's even better than like an M110 because of the super adjustable gas system. So when I say that the that this rifle... And by the way, I don't get paid from, by Palmetto. I don't do any promotions. I don't do... Uh, any like I don't know, click on the link and you did it, get a discount. I got no relationship period with Palmetto. I pay full price for everything I buy, um, you know, except for if they're running like let's say a, a, a discount or a sale, a holiday sale or something that's available to everyone. So I pay, I pay full price. So the reason why I say that this is the best rifle, per, the best AR-10 period, right? At any price range, in, even up against an, uh, a Knight's Armament M110 uh, is because you can throw any 308 ammunition into this and it will run because of the of the adjustable gas system. Okay, it's it's three slots per turn for a total of 17 positions. Okay, the issue with 308 ammunition is there's a lot of variation. So you know some some 308 loads are very light, some some are a lot heavier. Um, so what happens is, you know, people have issues with AR-10s not running, you know, this ammunition or that ammunition or the other ammunition. Uh, usually with military, with the, with the M110, right, that's, that's designed to shoot, you know, military 762 by 51 That's what it's designed to shoot. That's, it's, it's designed and, it, and it's, it's tuned to shoot a very specific ammunition, right? The gas system is designed. Now, I'm sure, like the sniper guys, they have you know, it may not be like standard M80 ball, uh, but but it's designed to shoot a very specific ammunition. You can't just throw any 7.62 in there. Uh, you can't you can't put 308 in that period because the way it works is that 308 rifles can shoot 7.62, but 7.62 rifles are not supposed to be shooting a, a 308. Okay, so so this PA-10 Gen 3, uh, ch you know, that's, that's, that's chambered for 308, will shoot either, okay? So you get the most amount of versatility with, with this rifle with the 17 adjustable gas positions so that it, it, you will get this to run with either super strong ammunition or super light or, 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 or really light and uh, 308 ammunition because of those 17 gas positions and that's like the number one thing that i would look for in an ar-10 if you look at all the reviews on the ruger s far that only has four adjustable gas positions i think originally it had three and then they upped it to four and there's videos all over the internet with it just not running reliably with this ammunition or that ammunition or the other ammunition right because it's oh, because four adjustable gas positions is not enough for 308 308 is just too much variation okay so uh with the other thing is with the with, with the with the adjustable gas positions like right now i was shooting the 147 grain freedom munitions right i, I made a note over here uh freedom munitions 147 grain okay 200 yards um with with, uh, with with that, I was shooting it in gas position number two. When I shoot the 150 grains, I'm able to shoot it in gas position number one. Okay, so that gives me like super light, like not super light, but but as far as 308 goes, as far as an AR AR10, the recoil is on the lighter end because I've closed the gas system to allow 
you know, a very small amount of gas into the system to cycle it. Now, if this was going to war, yeah, I would probably open it up to gas position number five so that the gun will work when it's muddy, right? But since today I am not in war and I, it's not muddy, you know, I was able to close off the gas system to give me, uh, you know, light recoil and pleasant shooting, right? If you notice here, I don't have a muzzle brake on this, you know, and I was still able to pretty much, you know, like, stay on target keep my chevron pretty much on target as i was shooting this without it like completely you know bouncing you know you know uh without me losing my sight picture you know um so 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 and like i said i think that this is like the best ar-10 out there bar none uh i got the lancer magazines in here clear i really like these uh one of my complaints is i hate i don't like the grip because I mean, it, this is like an A2 rubberized, um, which I don't mind so much. But the problem is that there's a hole here. I, I wish I had a compartment where I could store the Allen key that, or an Allen key that will adjust the the gas valve up there. Right, you can see it right there. I wish I could, I wish it had it. When I tried swapping in like a Magpul, it, it left an ugly gap here. So it will fit, but it will leave an ugly gap. Uh, which I do not like so I don't like the grip on this. That's my only complaint on this. I switched out the Safety uh, to an ambidextrous. If you notice on this side, I took a Dremel and I uh, And I actually carved it down so that when it's in that position See how and I just put a little sharpie there to color it. So I, I did that myself. So this was like a, a $35 uh, uh, Safety Right and then here turn on the other side. So on this side I left it long and then on my trigger finger side I cut it down. I, I basically shaved it down. Okay. Um, I did put a Schmidt uh, two-stage trigger in there. I think I got it off Palmetto's website. Uh, it was pretty. It was something like seventy dollars. That it feels really nice, right? The two the Schmidt two-stage. The other thing I did is I changed the. I didn't need. To, I didn't need to do any of these changes. The gun was working fine. I was. I, I when I hit the, uh, my first uh, inch and a quarter inch group. At 100 yards, I did it with like all stock stuff, okay? Uh, but doing these upgrades makes the gun more comfortable to shoot. Uh, the other thing I did is I put the orange sprinkle spring in there. Uh, and I also put the Quall Valley, I think 5.6 pound buffer weight. Uh, again, it just, just to pick up more of that recoil and make it for more pleasant shooting. Didn't need to do any of that uh, because you could fully adjust this all from up here from the gas system. So this is a really awesome gun and this is the primary arms 5 to 25 uh you see i i got the red dot on the offset here really nice big turrets really fun shooting like this is like a one i built this gun to be a 1000 yard gun right and i've done videos where i'm out at a thousand yards i think the best group i got at a thousand yards was uh 22 inches uh at a thousand yards with this you can still see i got some mud over here <laughs> that's from when i was out there uh so this is a really excellent gun i just want to get a 16 inch upper because it's a 20 inch stainless steel uh let's see 308 one in 10 twist palmetto i want to get a 16 inch version of this and just pop it on if i want to go light okay um and then, now i'm just going to get the upper i'm not going to commit to a lower at this point um by the way i also put a qd socket over here in the back yeah, I drilled that through. I got that from Amazon. Drilled, attached it there. Just M lock point here. The sling is uh, CB Life. Uh, normally, I like the brass tacticals because they're a little bit faster, a little bit. But, but because this gun is heavier, I went with the CB Life because it's a little bit thicker. Uh, so it spreads out the weight a little bit more. But again, because it's a little bit thicker, doesn't slide as easy. I've tried putting some, I, I've sprayed this down with silicon with the, the silicone lubrication to try and make it a little bit more, you know, and it did improve it a little bit, but, you know, I, because I, 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 this, I think, is an inch wide, or, or, or I, I prefer the, or inch and a quarter, I prefer the slightly thinner ones for, like, AR-15s, however, for the uh, AR-10, because it's a heavier gun, I prefer, you know, it's better with a slightly thicker one, but anyway, that's my group, I'm really happy with this, I, I, this gun, I haven't shot this gun, like, in, in uh, almost two months, maybe three months at this point. So these are like the, the first times it's been shot. Cold shots right here that you see. Uh, five shots. Uh, four, four out of five at one inch. And then with the flyer over here, it opened up to two inches at 200 yards. Freedom munitions, 147 grains. And like I said earlier, I'm going to include a playlist in the comments below uh, for this AR-10. Okay. Uh, 
and also for the scopes i'll also include a link to my scopes but yeah check out the playlist i've done a ton of videos on this rifle uh if you're if you're thinking about getting an ar-10 uh you should look through those okay i'll talk to y'all soon